not ours. God is what makes glory, uh, salvation a glorious thing. It's not vain for God to say, I am glorious. I will make myself known. I will bring glory to myself. It is necessary that God do this because sin certainly, as we've said many times, sin certainly brings no glory to God. Actually, it takes glory from him. God said that men have robbed him of his glory. Sin and transgression have dishonored me. In the gospel of Jesus Christ, glory has been given to the Father in a most profound manner, for sin has been taken away. In addition to this, he is culturing a people. After the knowledge of himself through the gospel, makes it a glorious gospel. It is a glorious gospel coming from a blessed God. We have a church who does not see the glory of the gospel. The gospel is intended to be food for faith. While it brings us into the fellowship of God, it continues to nurture us into the mature person of Jesus Christ. Paul refers to this in Ephesians 1.13. We just read, Paul is talking about a word of truth, the gospel of our salvation. It's a message that the Ephesians had received. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said, you've heard it. It's a word of truth. It's a true word, a pure word. It's as a word comes from God. It's not mixed with any other word. It's a message from God. And it has a power to save. It's a glorious message. Now, this message is different from any other message. There are many, many messages out there, but this is God's word. That's right. The truth we are referencing, referencing to is the truth of God. It's been given to us by the Son. Actually, the Son brought us this word of truth. It was given to him to speak. Jesus said several times, I have not spoken of myself. I speak only what the Father has given me to speak. And this word pertains to spiritual realities which come through a singular focus on Jesus Christ. In the context of the ministry of the apostles, they gave us the record of Jesus Christ. They concentrated all their attention on him. They labored, they labored to, to give them utmost clarity to him. And this is a trademark of the truth if you're looking for it. The attention is always centered on Jesus Christ. And it must be this way. Because everything is gathered, in, gathered into him, into one. Jesus brought to the twelve, this was a message strictly given to him by the Father. They, stay, they knew this. It came from the Father. The apostles in like manner brought to us a message that is strictly from Jesus. It was the apostles' doctrine. All the apostles had the same doctrine that they received from the Lord. After three years with Jesus, the apostles didn't come away each with a different doctrine one according to their interpretation of what they thought Jesus said and what he did and what they, they thought he meant. They had one message, and it, neither one contradicted the other. Amen. Jesus said in John 17, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them to me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known all things whatsoever thou hast given are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and they have known surely that I came from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. These were the eyewitnesses Jesus was talking about. They taught the brethren what Jesus taught them. And then when the spirit of truth came, he continued to guide the apostles into the truth. And what was taught to them agreed with what much you need to do, Peter said. And this is something we can do. Uh, you don't need anybody to do it for you. Quite frankly, we really don't want anybody to do it, to do it for us. Paul wrote to, the, to Timothy while he was in Ephesus, and he told him that the Spirit speaketh expressly. Mm -hmm. He said the, the Spirit speaks very clearly that in the latter times some, some shall depart from the faith. They will give heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, and the hypocrisy of liars. He said that hypocritical liars will come in, preachers and teachers, under the influence of seducing spirits and with the doctrines of devils. They will bring a message that is contrary to one that gives faith. Now, isn't that what he says here? Those who listen to them shall depart from the faith. That's what Paul said. So in verse 6, Paul tells Timothy, if thou put the brethren 
in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. You'll be a, you will be nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereof thou hast attained. We can all do this for one another. Nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine. This is a word we have received, one of faith. Everything about it concerns faith, including the righteousness we seek by faith. Paul told the Colossians the same thing he told Timothy. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard, those who are presented before the Father will have no spot or wrinkle or any such thing. They'll be holy, blameless, and without fault, just like he said. And this is the way we all want to be presented. On, on, that's the way we want to stand before the Lord like this. And he's going to make it. He's going to do this for us. And this is the way we want to be. Not one of us in this room wants to be, appear before the Lord without Jesus in our behalf. Yes. So we want to be found in him. When Jesus returns, you know, brother, it's going to be in the blink of an eye. It's going to be just that sudden and just that abrupt. Right. It's going to be one moment and he's not there, and then the next moment he's going to be there. Yeah. Time will end right then. It will be no, time will no longer exist. Yeah. That means there will be no time to change your mind. Mm -hmm. There will be no opportunity to change it all. Mm -hmm. uh, so if this is the manner, if this is the way in which all things will end, <coughs> How should we continue? I asked, how should we continue then? Well, the scriptures give us an answer. And we're going to close with this. Paul said, in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard. For it's a, a gospel of your salvation, a glorious gospel. Thank you, brothers. Amen.